Thanks for joining us at Right On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the greatest scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Trumpeter Chinese Nanchang CJ6 148 scale aircraft kit, number 02887. Over 3,000 of the original air aircraft were made for the Chinese Air Force, and this kit features engraved panel lines, a detailed tandem cockpit section, although there's no seat backs included, but tricycle uh, undercarriage, boxed in wheel bays, and a single piece canopy. One water slide decal sheet comes with crisp and clean decals for two typical Chinese aircraft, including instrument markings, stencil data, and additional numerals for alternate liberties. The directions are very basic, with one piece fold out, three steps are involved, and a nice color guide though for decal placement and color specifics. I recommend uh, Mr. Color Brand Flat Black, Tan, Light Green, Light Blue, Gray, Red, and Green for this model. And I stayed with the box art for the review, which is clean and simple. The kit has four part sprues and one clear part sprue. They're numbered and easy to follow, and they give you a choice of two options for props to use. The model is a nice build with only a few easy to fix flaws that are shown in the review. The kit size is 7 inches long, 8.5 inches wide, and 2 and 5 and 8 inches tall from tip to tail. Here you see the packaging for the clear parts in its own wrapped bag and a sturdy sprue for the cow. I was pretty impressed with this for both the canopy and the cow came out flawless. Now gather the pieces shown here for assembly of the cockpit area. The cockpit has a nice layout, but the gauges uh, are not well detailed, but there are some nice decals for that. The cockpit goes together flawlessly, and the detail on the gauges comes from the decals, so you may want to just sand those off. This view gives you a nice look at what you can do for detail in the cockpit area, and also if you use a little simple black wash, it really brings out and highlights the parts there. Now decorate the sides of the cockpit, again using the callouts from the instructions. And note that they are easily seen through the canopy, so the sides of the bulkheads are notched and make sure that you test fit those before gluing them into place. You can see here the side walls have been installed and there's ample detail in the cockpit area. One of the few negatives for this kit is that the sprues are attached to the gluing surfaces in some areas. So you have to sand those off completely. After you snip the sprue tabs loose uh, from the part, you can see that there is still a considerable amount left. So trim those off, sand them flat for a good gluing surface. You'll find this issue along several points of the fuselage, including the, uh, the tip of the tail here. So make sure that you locate all of those and trim them off before you glue. Now gather both fuselage halves, the cockpit and the front wheel well together. The instructions show this part, uh, the front wheel well, uh, inverted. It should be flipped over 180 degrees because as it sits, it's upside down and backwards for installation. This photo shows a proper installation and notice that there should be a small hole towards the front here when you are finished with it uh, properly oriented. Now here's the finished subassembly after cleaning up the uh, sprue marks. They fit together perfectly and there's very little seam lines. Here you can see that I've added a little light uh, black wash to pull out some of the highlights of the interior. Gather the uh, parts shown here, the firewall and the glare shields for the pilots. These parts are a good uh, close fit so they won't require much cement. Use a little bit of body putty here to fill in that seam around the firewall. There wasn't any fill required around the glare shields at all. Add some filler to the bottom seam, but as you can see it's, it's pretty easy to fill at this point. Now pull out the parts needed to finish the main wing with the inserts to finish the wheel wells too. Now take a look at this piece which is the forward uh, section in the wheel well and note that it has a, a bump on one side along with, uh, along with a beveled edge and so you're going to orient it with that outward. 
so uh, glue that into place uh, as the picture indicates. Here's another look at that subassembly. Uh, as you can see, the left side's been installed and the right side is yet to be placed. You can see where the joint uh, is indicated by the red arrow, and that um, actually forms the circular portion of the wheel well at the front edge. Now you glue the top portions of the wings together, and it was impressive how well they fit together uh, for such an inexpensive kit like this. Now pull out the pieces for the rear stabilizers and get those ready to install. Add the elevators to the rear stabilizers and install those to the body of the plane. Now install the rear skid bar underneath in the tail and add the last stabilizer. Now add the clear lenses to the bottom of the wing and install the wing to the fuselage. Make sure that it fits snugly and glue it in place. Here's a close up of that section showing how the sight lenses will look after installation. Once again I was nicely impressed by the fit of this model. Uh, you look at the underside of the wing root there and there's uh, virtually no seam uh, to be seen. Looking here at the bottom you'll see that the seam is there on the bottom of the tail section and that's the worst one in the whole kit which is actually still pretty good. Now we need to start filling some of these seam lines with some modeling putty. You can get that at the hobby shop. You can see the seams being filled here on the bottom side after a little light cleanup. It won't take much, but you need to do this in order to get a good looking airplane when you're finished. Now it's time to tape off the cockpit areas and cover up the clear lenses on the bottom in order to give it a light spray of overall light gray primer. Following that, you're going to add some light, uh, a, a base coat of Tamiya XF-58 Olive Drab, which has been thinned for your spray gun, and apply that to the top side of the aircraft. On the bottom side of the aircraft, we're going to use uh, an XF-23 Light Blue Tamiya paint, um, and then let this whole assembly set aside to dry. Now gather up the um, peripheral parts for the underside of the plane, including the landing gear and the flaps, and uh, install the, um, the peripherals, but uh, hold up on installing the landing gear. Right now we're just going to mock them up. Now here you can see the peripheral pieces have been added, uh, but the landing gear uh, have been added to the flaps and just put into place so that we can see the stance on the aircraft. Once again the detail on this kit is pretty impressive. The wheel well inserts look really nice here. By sliding the uh, main wheels onto the landing gear and setting the plane into position on something flat you can see that it's uh, very heavy in the tail and uh, needs some weight up front to keep it from uh, dragging in the back. Now gather the pieces here uh, to finish off the front end, uh, the engine, the props, the uh, blades, the cowling, and some things to put a little weight in the front end to keep the tail from dragging. After gluing the engine plate into place and the cowling, you can uh, add some weight. I used some BBs here and just glued them into place behind the engine plate uh, to give it that extra weight up front. Test fit your weight to make sure that it works out and the tricycle gear land on all three. And then glue it into place, mask off the engine plate and spray it camel green like the rest of the fuselage. Now that we've got a base coat on our plane, we're going to spray it with some overall crystal clear Krylon paint to give it a gloss finish for the decals to adhere. Now you can take the decals, cut them out and apply them as shown in the instructions. And I recommend using some decal setting solution like micro scales in order to get the uh, decals to stick and stay in place over contours and things. Here's an overall look uh, of the decaled airplane. There's a few options in the kit but uh, I chose the box art. And as you'll also notice uh, the green really changed uh, tone after the clear was applied which is uh, intended to look more like a, a Chinese green aircraft. After it's all dried, I turned the uh, airplane over, uh, painted the uh, struts and the wheel wells aluminum, 
and the tires uh, a rubber color, uh, flat black. Also, uh, I painted, hand painted uh, the bottom of the cowl so that it matched the underside of the plane. Now we'll turn our attention to the canopy. Um, I used a hand brush here and just painted the framework and then after it dried I cleaned off anything uh, that was outside of the frame uh, edges with a toothpick. It just flakes right off. Uh, and this uh, was very clear and clean looking canopy. Now you can test fit the canopy into place uh, using a sand stick if you need to to make sure it fits snugly there. Now I use uh, some Krylon flat clear paint to go over the entire model to give it the necessary sheen for a military look. Now we can do some more detailing by adding the pitot tube and the aerial mast to the aircraft. Now I'll paint the prop blades flat black and the hub silver and assemble that. And then um, add some silver highlighting to the uh, flat black engine plate so that it gets a more realistic look. Assemble the prop to the plane. Now we're going to paint the nav lights here. But, but remember, um, the red of course is on the uh, port side to the left and uh, green to the right and starboard side. And we're going to add the landing light covers after we uh, we paint those. And it once it's, uh, it's clear here, then you it looks kind of reddish when you place it into the uh, slot. Now it's time for some uh, final touch-ups here, like uh, of the landing light cover. Also, um, you might want to add some black wash to uh, the uh, aluminum in the wheels and uh, wells and struts uh, to give it that uh, used look. So uh, here it is uh, from the different views you can see that this is a really nice looking uh, plane for your shelf display. Uh, it really uh, competes admirably with uh, uh, models at uh, that price point uh, and scale. And I think that you'll find uh, it goes together very well. Uh, the, f the pieces fit very well. The molding was crisp. The canopy was clear. Um, I can't say anything really bad about this model. Uh, Trumpeter did a good job of it. Um, if you don't have one of these, go out and get one. They're available online at um, a hobby shop uh, on Facebook or other locations uh, on the internet so that um, you can have one of these uh, for your very own. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this step-by-step -step how to build it review from Right On Replicas. You don't want to miss any future issues so please subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can also find us on Facebook as well as on the web at www.rightonreplicas.com